Namah Shivaya Om 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 Namah Shivaya Namaste. Ole! <laughs> you know, there's no reason why we can't have fun with this stuff. You know, you listen to all the recordings of Panchakshara Mantra online, they're all so serious and slow. Well, what about Shiva Mambo, huh? Shiva can dance. When he dances, look out. <laughs> anyway, so... Let's get back to this Brahma Sutra. The point here in this Adhikarna is that the Absolute is sentient. And because Brahman is sentient, it is the source of everything. Because the previous Adhikarna was about how Brahman creates everything, and this one talks about how by consciousness, by desire, by thought, visualization, imagination. This is the Icha Shakti, the desire potency of Brahman. And this is how he does everything. So, of course, you know, the opponents, the Sankhyas, are going to try to argue against this. And they use all kinds of logical tricks, or really logical fallacies. And in this particular section, they use the fallacy of taking quotes out of context. Now, why is this a fallacy? Because context determines meaning. Huh? We've been over this a bunch of times on this channel since the very beginning. And what it means is that the meaning of a word, because most words have multiple definitions, it's determined by the context, what comes before and what comes after. So to cherry pick a single quote that appears to support your position and then twist the meaning out of context so that it says what you want it to say, is a logical fantasy. Uh, it's a fallacy. It's a fabrication. And so Shankara comes back and devastates this attempt <laughs> in his usual manner. <laughs> that is to say, completely. Let's take a look. The Sankhyas enter a protest here. As for the assertion that the insentient pradhan cannot be the cause of the universe in the face of the Vedic reference to the fact of visualizing, that can be explained from another point of view. For in common parlance, even an insentient thing is referred to figuratively as sentient. As for instance, it is a matter of experience that on noticing the bank of a river on the point of collapsing, they say, the bank is about literally wishes to fall, where sentience is ascribed to the insentient bank. Similarly, with regard to pradhan, from which creation is imminent, there may be a figurative ascription of sentience by saying, it saw. Just as somebody in ordinary life first plans thus, I shall bathe and then eat and go to the village in the afternoon by riding a chariot. And having planned thus, he acts in that order. So also Pradhan transforms itself as Mahat and the rest in a regular order, so as to be referred to figuratively as a sentient entity. Objection by the Vedantin. Why, again, should the seeing in the primary sense be discarded in favor of a secondary one? Samkhya because the figurative use of sentience is noticed in the cases of insentient things like water and fire, in such sentences as that fire saw or thought. Chandogya Upanishad 6, 2, 3. These waters saw. Chandogya 6, 2, 4. 
therefore from the fact of occurring in a context of secondary uses in Chandogya 6, 2-4. It is to be understood that the seeing by existence, which is but another name for pradhan, is spoken of in a secondary sense. Oh, this is a nasty one. Huh? This is just like the material scientists when they talk about the creation being based on chance. Huh? It makes no sense at all. Well, let's say f as an illustration, if you have a box full of computer parts, you know, integrated circuits and wires and capacitors and this and that, and you just shake it up, huh? Real good. <laughs> Is a working circuit going to come out of that? No. We only observe the functions of a computer, let's say, when the parts are assembled by an intelligent human being with the ability to make plans and design things and follow through on them. So, in the same way, the universe cannot be a product of chance. No way. Huh? Even an infinite number of monkeys typing, playing on typewriters are not going to write Shakespeare. It's not going to happen. Because the quality of intelligence is absent. The quality of consciousness, deliberation, will, intention, and so on. So now let's see how Vyasa, the aphorist, or the author of these sutras, and Shankaracharya respond to this. This contingency having arisen, an aphorism is presented here. Gaunas chenat mashabdat chet. If it be argued that seeing is gaunaha in a secondary sense, then na, it is not so. Atmachabdat, owing to the use of the word self. Sutra 6. If it be argued that the seeing is in a secondary sense, we say not so, owing to the use of the word self. The assertion is wrong that the insentient pradhan is referred to by the word existence and that seeing is ascribed to it in a secondary sense just as in the cases of water and fire. Why? Owing to the use of the word self. After the introductory sentence, O amiable one, this universe before its creation was but existence. Chandogya 6.2.1 The creation of fire, water, and earth is stated in It saw, it created fire. Chandogya 6.2.3 and then the text refers to that very seeing existence as well as those fire, earth, and water by the word deity. And the text says, That deity that is such saw or thought, now then let me manifest name and form by myself entering into these three deities as the jiva, individual soul, that is but myself. Chandogya 6.3.2 now, if insentient pradhan have been imagined to be the seer in some secondary sense, then pradhan being the entity under discussion, it should have been alluded to by the text, that deity that is such. But in that case, the deity would not call the individual soul his own self. For from usage and derivation, the word jiva, the individual soul, means that which lives, that is, has sentience, controls the body, and holds together the organs and senses. How can that soul be the self of the insentient pradhan? For the self is the same as one's very essence. The insentient pradhan cannot certainly have the sentient soul as its very essence. On the contrary, if Brahman, that is consciousness, is accepted as the seer in the primary sense, its use of the word self with reference to the individual soul becomes justifiable. So also is the case with the text, that existence, which is this extremely subtle thing, 
is the self of all this universe. That is reality. That is the self. That thou art, O Shvetaketu. Chandogya 6, 7, 8. By saying that is the self, that text presents that reality, that subtle self, as the self under consideration. And then in the text, that thou art, O Shvetaketu, occurs the instruction about it as the self of the conscious being, Shvetaketu. But the seeing in the case of water and fire is secondary since they are insentient inasmuch as they are objects of perception. Besides, they are mentioned as factors employed in the manifestation of name and form. Moreover, there is nothing like the word self in their case to make their seeing a possibility in the primary sense. Hence, it is reasonable that the seeing by them should be secondary, as in the case of the falling of the bank of a river. Or, the seeing by them, too, may be in the primary sense, this being possible from the point of view of the reality forming their basis. But we pointed out that the seeing by reality is not secondary because of the use of the word self. Self. Atma. Atma Shabdat, na Atma Shabdat. Huh? The word self is not found in the description of the Sankhyas. So it can't be a cause of creation. Huh? Pradhan can never be creation's cause because the creation is found to exhibit consciousness in the form of the living entities. And even in the demigods, the deities in charge of the elements such as fire, water, air, etc. So here we have a clear case of the Samkhyas cherry picking and taking out from their context a small statement that seems to justify their position, but actually, when it's understood in the whole of the context, does not. And the proof is that this entire passage, the several chapters in the Chandogya, is about the instructions of the father to his son, Svetaketu. And it always concludes with, Thou art that, Brahman. Because Brahman is conscious and consciousness. And that consciousness reflected in the jiva is the source of the consciousness in the created beings. Consciousness cannot arise from anything but consciousness. It cannot arise from insentient matter, like the pradhan, the imaginary source of creation of the sankhyas. The pradhan is simply a concept that refers to the sum total of all the generated subtle elements before the manifestation. So we know it as prakriti. The Vedic idea of prakriti, however, is conscious. She is shakti, maya. She is the illusory energy of Shiva. When he creates the world, he uses her to arrange everything and give the apparent life to everything. Whereas we see the whole world in motion and we see the beings apparently conscious and apparently doing this and that. huh? But yet, these bodies and minds and the world in which they exist is nothing but an illusion. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.